huge price for a non-Rembrandt, said the Associated Press in a news article in 2007. Quote, the unidentified winning bidder may have concluded that it was a self-portrait by Rembrandt. Close quote. The auction house in England was only advertising it as a work by one of his followers valued at $3,078. In 15 minutes, it was sold for $4.5 million. Have you ever wanted to paint with the same quality and beauty that is seen in the paintings of the finest museums in the world? Now you have that opportunity. Welcome to the world of Frank Covino and his students. It was not unusual to have a copy of a Rembrandt. For 500 years, it was normal for students to learn painting by copying their master teachers. Students also copied many other paintings and drawings by other masters who preceded them. Why did they copy? Copying worked as a valuable teaching tool. It has only been in the last century that this practice has been shunned instead of being used as a great learning tool. Frank Covino, a master artist in our own time, teaches his students to copy the masters of the 1400s through the 1800s. I encourage my painters to copy the masters. Certainly it's the way music is learned. Do you know any musician who hasn't had to copy Beethoven, Mozart, Bach, before he's encouraged to compose his own piece? Ours is the only business I know of where we so audaciously jump into painting without having had that experience. Covino said, quote, I am convinced that painting in the classical academic manner is a craft with a scientific basis. It can be learned by anyone who has the desire, the patience, the discipline, and a reasonable amount of intellectual capacity. It is logical. It is straightforward. The problem with most painting classes is that the teachers frequently put the cart before the horse. Students are encouraged to be creative before they have learned how to handle the tools of their profession. To paint significant art, you need to visit significant art. And by visiting, I don't mean just looking at it. I mean duplicating it. The same way a musician would duplicate Beethoven. In a Frank Covino workshop, the students first learn craftsmanship by copying the masters. Once these skills are learned, they have the ability to compose their own paintings and make them into masterpieces. Listen to Frank Covino teaching in one of his workshops. The first step in preparing a control palette for Verdaccio is to grease it well with olive oil. Just a drop or two, rub it in with your hands, it's good for your skin. It protects the plastic and it brings out the true value. Do this every time you put new paint onto your control palette. Covino has gone beyond what he has learned from the 500 years of master's paintings. He has found ways to accelerate his students' learning. He has developed a controlled palette based on information from Leonardo da Vinci. And before my students learn how to paint, they must learn how to recognize values. To help them with that procedure, I've invented this little palette, which you might compare to a piano keyboard. This is a palette of gray values. Black representing zero, the absence of light, and white representing 100% light, or the number 10. Value 5 then would be 50% light, value 7, 70% light, and so forth. The use of Frank Covino's controlled palette assures the accuracy of mixing paint with the exact hue, value, and intensity needed for the desired effect that an artist wants. Covino believes his controlled palette is one of the greatest tools he has given to the art industry. Well, I was born to 
By using the Covino palette to mix on, the exact flesh tones of every individual can be matched, whether it is the skin of a live model or a copy of a painting. Covino has mastered the lost art of mixing and using colored glazes to paint over a finished underpainting. The glazes work like magic, bringing life and depth to a monochromatic underpainting. Covino has guided thousands of students in the completion of over 24,000 paintings in this classical, academic manner. Vermont's master artist, Frank Covino, comes again to California. His 2010 five-day workshop schedules are May 17th through May 21st, also November 1st through November 5th, 2010, in Cameron Park, California. For more information and to download an enrollment form, go to the Sherry Hunting Academy of Classical Realism website at sherryhunting.com spelled S-H-E-R-R-Y-H-U-N-T-T-I-N-G dot com. Don't delay. To ensure your place, enroll at least two weeks before the scheduled workshop date.